Alright you beautiful people welcome back in the last video we learned about a real life example of asynchronous programming of getting movie tickets and liking Instagram pictures and how to do that more efficiently. Today we are going to learn how to use asynchronous programming for file handling. So when we are reading and writing to multiple files or even downloading multiple files or images from the internet, we can perform these operations more quickly and more efficiently and thus taking less time to complete all of these tasks of downloading multiple images maybe and async io can help you perform all these operations pretty easily so we are going to see an example of that in today's video and we are going to see a simulation of file handling and how it can save you some time so we're going to start with a very simple synchronous example a synchronous example that happens sequentially so first of all we are just going to import our time module so that we can calculate the time it takes to execute a program and let's say we are fetching a file from the internet let's just say that so we are just going to create a simple function over here and we are just going to write fetch underscore file and inside that uh, i'm just going to print out a statement let's just say starting uh, to fetch a file and uh, to simulate fetching of a file what we can do is we can just write time dot sleep and let's just leave for one second and then finally when it has finished downloading we can just print out uh, something like fetching file completed and then let's just create another function where we will call this fetch file function so i'm just going to call this function main function and let's print out uh, starting main so that we know where our program is currently and then let's uh, let's download this file three times or let's simulate fetching this file three times so we are just going to call this uh, fetch file function a couple of times so let's call it three times so i'm just going to write fetch file fetch file and uh, then let's just write uh, print out that our main has been completed and uh, let's call our main function finally and after that let's see how much time it takes to execute this whole program to do that we are just going to create a new variable called start uh, which will have the start of the time stored inside this variable and then to calculate um, whenever we have finished our program we are just going to create a variable called end and let's also store the current time over here and then to see the final time we are just going to print out execution time is and over here we can just do end minus start which will give us the speed of execution in seconds so let's just run this and see how it looks so starting to starting mean fetching a file completing a file and finally main completed so the code has been executed in three seconds so we fetched our file three times and we had our time dot sleep of one second so obviously it took us three seconds but one thing you notice is that it goes sequentially so first first it starts to fetch a file and then it completes fetching that file and then it again starts to fetch a file and make sure it's completed before starting to fetch the third file so it's doing it very sequentially but we want to do it asynchronously so let's uh, learn how to do that now so what we can do is actually just, let's just copy and paste this code over here which will save us a little bit of time and let's convert this into a coroutine which we have already learned how to do that and instead of time dot sleep because it doesn't work when we are using async io so actually let's just import that to over here async io and whenever you are using async io make sure to use async io dot sleep module to uh, simulate the sleeping part and we're just gonna sleep for one second again and this returns a coroutine so make sure you add an await keyword in front of it so it pauses this fetch file function or fetch file coroutine and it will make sure that it sleeps for one second and then we are also gonna convert our main function to a coroutine and then to execute a coroutine that is this main coroutine we obviously need an event loop so we are just going to write async io dot run and we are going to run our main coroutine which in turn will run our fetch file coroutine and what we can use over here to execute this in an asynchronous manner is something known as async io dot gather so let's actually use that then i'm going to explain what it actually does so i'm just going to write a wait over here and then i'm going to write async io dot gather and inside that we are just gonna close our brackets over here and we are gonna add a comma over here and a comma over here and let's remove this bracket from here so what async io dot gather does is that it executes all the coroutines concurrently so you don't have to create tasks one by one for all these fetching of the files we can just use async io dot gather to simulate that so it's basically a helpful like utility function for both grouping and executing multiple coroutines or multiple tasks 
So this is pretty much it. Let's actually run and see how it looks. So let's just run that and you can see the difference immediately. So let me actually run this slow code again, just to show you guys the difference. And uh, so yeah, we saw that first of all in our slow code or the synchronous code that it started the main function and then it started to fetch a file. And when the download of the file was completed, only then we started to fetch the second file. And when the download of the second file was completed, then we started the third file. So it was doing it in a sequential or a synchronous manner. But over here, you can see when we were doing it asynchronously, it didn't wait for the first file to complete downloading or fetching. It immediately started fetching the second file. And then while it was downloading the first file, it kind of started fetching the second file and downloading the second file. So all, all of this started happening concurrently and we didn't need to wait for a file to completely get downloaded. So that is why it saved us time over here. So you can see that instead over here, our execution time was three seconds, but over here, our execution time is just one second. So it saved us a lot of time. Now, just a warning. So whenever you want to handle a file from your disk, because there's a lot of blocking going on. If you just use file.open or file.read like we normally do while file handling in Python, there's a lot of blocking going on. So the time actually taken by a synchronous program might be actually less than a synchronous program. It also might depend upon your PC. So what you should do when handling a file asynchronously, make sure you use Python libraries that support that. So for example, if you are using uh, if you're doing some kind of file handling, writing to a file or reading from a file, make sure you use a library known as AIO files. So I'm just going to add that name over here. So for example, handling of files is AIO files. And whenever you want to send any kind of request or you want to download images from the internet asynchronously, you have to use a library known as AIO.http. Not dot HTTP, just AIO HTTP. And this makes it very, very easy for you to download files from the internet asynchronously. You don't have to write the code from scratch. So guys, this is pretty much it for this video. I'll see you in the next one where we learn how to send emails asynchronously. So for example, what if you want to send an email in the background to multiple people while you are doing something else uh, in your code? So we are going to learn how to do that in the next video. I'll see you over there.